Hallelujah. I guess I get an ask. So what did God do for you today? Woke her up this morning. He took her to church. Come on. He gave him life. Give him life. Come on. He gave me a house to live in. A house to live in. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on now. He teach me stuff. He teach me stuff. Yeah. He give me new shoes. New shoes. Come on. What else he did? He gave me a blessing. He gave me giving us water. He gave me water too, huh? He gave me a blessing. He made good to us, right? Yes, sir. He love us, right? Yes, sir. What can we do without God? Nothing. What can we do without God? What can we do without God? Nothing. One more time. What can we do without God? Nothing. What can we do with God? Everything. What can we do with God? Everything. What can we do with God? Everything. We can't do that without Him. But we can do everything with Him. So why not serve Him and be a part of Him? Because he can do everything. So if he can do everything, what do you have any need for anything? If he can do everything. All right, all right, all right. What's up, big man? Hallelujah. Look at, look at, look, look what God did this morning, today. Gave y'all some food. Gave y'all some love. Come on. Oh, my blessing. Money. Oh, oh my God. Come on now. Yeah, we said new opportunity to be great. That's a good one now. What God did for the older folks today. We got we got the little children cut up over here. But what did he do for the older folks today? He woke her up this morning. What did he do for you, brother? He brought him to church. What did he do for you, brother? Oh, man, come on, man. But we should be happy today because why? Somebody didn't wake up this morning. And somebody woke up and still living like they not woke. Come on, now. They got somebody right now in the dying bed. They got somebody right now putting. Come on now. Come on. Still lost. Don't know what it costs to be the boss, eh? Come on now, sister. You own it over there. But got what? What you got in your hand might burn out your hand. Yeah, it would. You, hold on, you just been telling me about all the good things about God, but you scratched it off over there. Come on now. Hold up now. Hold up, somebody ain't telling the truth over here. All right, all right, all right, you know what we doing, come on now. God said you don't have to scratch up. He's a miracle worker. So get what, get what, get what, get what you looking at, magic. We don't want no magic over here. We deal with miracles over here, right, y'all? Yeah, miracles! Right up. But guess what? What for you, for you? Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God be good. All the time. He's good. Can't do without it. Can't do nothing without him. Come on now, y'all. Not without him. My God. But you can do everything with him. My God. So why we don't serve that, that God like that? Uh-oh. Because we got some non-believers, huh? That's why we don't serve that God like that? Eight years. Whoa, they know some stuff. Nine believers don't know what God really is. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. But but you know you know what I learned about the things I can't see? The results I have from it. See, see, I see I gotta see it. I I know how it works. Because guess what? I, I don't want to want to have nothing. But right now, God just blessed my life so much. I'm glad I got to know it. Uh -huh. That's how it is. See, when you get to know it, you'll see what you're working with. You will worry about it if you can see it or not. Because some things I won't see. Hold up now. Some things I won't see. Why? Because they ain't no good for me. But when they come... In a, in, a, in a twinkling of an eye or, or come when I'm not expecting it, it's much better. But if I know what it is already, I might not like it as much. But when I get it, when I least expect it, my God. Because why? He know exactly what your mind is out here right now. He know exactly what you need. Uh-huh. He know you need some money, but he don't want you to count on nothing but him. We talk about cutting on the count on him. So if you count on him, guess what? You wouldn't be at the store. Go and spit up your money. Uh-huh. Come on now. We talk about an old time God, a God that make ways out of no way. Come on now. What would he do it? 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 Hallelujah. Come on! What are we doing? He's been doing it for us from day one. Why? Because a lot of us don't even deserve it. Come on now. Come on now. But guess what? He loves us anyhow. You know what I love about it? He said he looked beyond your faults to see your needs. Hold up now. Y'all got to think about that. Meaning God ain't worried about your faults. He too much. He got his mind on your needs. Uh-huh. He ain't worried about your folks because, see, your folks come and go. But he know you're in need of a Savior. He know you're in need of a healing. He know you're in need of some direction. He know that. So that's why I love about him. He looked behind our folks. Now, a lot of us know we had some folks that we don't want to be. Come on now. But guess what? He saw your needs. He saw you wanted to change, but you didn't know how to change because you were still with the wrong ones who didn't want change. So you got to watch your company because your company, what is it, misery love company? Sometimes you be with misery. And, and misery ain't talking about nothing but, 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 but problems. See, I'm tired of dealing with problems. I want some solutions. They don't cook in the brain. Can't misery brings solutions. Well, he can't. He don't know solution is. Because he took hard on problems. He took hard on what's going on instead of what he need to do. You gotta understand. We gotta get back involved with whatever's going on in our lives. Because you have to understand. You gotta be the one to know how to fight for what's yours. If you want to live right, you want to get better, you gotta fight for better. If you're going to do better, you got to do better. You got to understand, it don't just happen overnight either. It's a constant fight. Because sometimes you feel like you want to do all type of stuff, but then you realize the consequences. Well, that's what people going to tell you. Because what? You see somebody that they did what you ain't doing and live in misery. Come on now, y'all. There's no way around darkness but trouble. Man. Broken heart. You know what I'm saying? But what I learned about the light, that joy, that peace, that happiness, that way down, that better days. God has just been too good to us. What's y'all think? That old thing trying to follow you. How you doing? Ain't nothing but the nurturing on me. He ain't gonna do you nothing. He just gonna love on me. Yeah, he around all this love and power and power. Yeah, he ain't trying to do you nothing, brother. He want to be around all this power and joy and happiness. Even 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 insect knows who God is. Come on now, that's saying. 
even the insects know who God is. Hallelujah. We got company, y'all. How good God been? How good God been? How good he been to you? Come on now. How good he been to y'all? He been wonderful. Uh oh, there goes another word, y'all. Look at that. He, he, he gave us another one. Awesome. Wonderful. Merciful. Whatever. Grateful. Come on now. Blessing. Come on. Give me some names. Look, where, where he been to you? He been your friend. Oh, my God. That's better than anything right there. If you have a friend that put that sticking closer than the brother. Oh my God. So you know one thing, that friend will never turn his back on you. He'll never come against you. He will always love you. He'll help you do better for yourself. I love that friend. Man. But I had some friends that cut me in my head. I had some friends that turned their back on me. Come on now, y'all. We just have to get somewhere. <laughs> But God said, I'm a friend in deep. Even when we know, when, even when we not no friend, he said, I'll be a friend to you. When everybody else turned their back on you, he said, I'll be a witch. Come on now, y'all. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, y'all. Praise the Lord. Somebody give me a testimony. What God did for you. Look at that. I love that. Look, he ready, boy. I want to let people know that God be good to me. Come on. All right. Come on. Come on now. Come on. Come on! 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 Look at that. 
Oh, you don't know! Oh! Give me a head. She came to me first. I need to get this cut. No, you was acting mean with the purse. God bless the blessing. But I need to tell you one thing. You know what, sister? That will put you anywhere. It will fall her to act the way she was acting so God can give it to you. You, you got to understand how God do some things. God said he'll, he'll stir up trouble sometimes. The Bible said he made a sound of a chariot to run the people out the lane. Come on now, y'all know that. I said he made a sound of chariots to run the people out the land so the people can overtake everything that was in there. Hold up now. Oh, we talking about God now. He working it out. Yeah. Come on now. That's what we love about him because don't he always make a way for us? Come on now. Even when you ain't acting right, living right now. Come on now, he's still working it out. Huh? See, that was so beautiful about him. No matter what situation you're in, huh? God said, I'll take you just the way you are. And fix you up. My God, boy, look at that. Look at that, y'all. I love, I, I love good reports. Now, you know what my blessing is? Yeah, my blessing is. I remember I was homeless. And God turned some stuff around for me. Blessed me with my own crib. Blessed me with three cars now. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Don't make me act a fool. Because see, I want you the only one to have a good time. I want to have a good time too. I want to let the world know that God is good to me too. Because she's not going to want to be by herself. No, I won't be, I won't get along with this party. Look like y'all having a good time. Why? Because y'all represent somebody that represents you from day one. When you wasn't even, before you was formed in your mother's womb, he represented you. He allowed your mama to allow you to come into the world. Come on now. Somebody, kid, that didn't make it in. But God looked behind my fault and saw a need and saw a blessing, my God. You better look around and know that you're a blessing. Quit acting like a curse, huh? Quit acting like it's all bad. Huh? And quit acting, quit putting a limit on God. We don't want to put no limit on him, so that's why we acting the way we act. We over here, and we ain't entertaining nothing. We ain't fake checking. We been real, huh? Because why? He been real to us. They got some folks. Come on now, sister. Come on now. Because why? He always work it out. You know what? You know the, the beautiful part is about it is he work it out for your good. My God, come on. You said, man, you just don't know. Somebody saying right now he ain't working out for my good. But the question is, did you work it out? Come on now. God didn't make you to serve him. Come on now. What he, what he did. He made him to serve you. Oh, come on. Because God came into the world to serve us. To make us, to give us a life beyond life. Because some of us was on our way to hell. But God gave us another opportunity to make it into that promised land. Come on now, some of us were fair game. But I know I was fair game. You know, I've been into so much, even at 12 years old. Out there living the streets of nowhere. Smoking crack cocaine, <laughs> snorting heroin, snorting coke. Huh? Looking at 60 years in prison, huh? looking at a life sentence. Oh, oh, no, don't make me act up. But look at God. See how it is? When you stand, no matter what it look like, huh? see, but see, when the storm comes, you got to be the storm chaser. Whatever your problem is, you got to run it over and say, man, that ain't for me. Huh? God ain't make me for this, for this deal, huh? to stand here and be beat up. Huh? I'm about to fight back. 
somebody right now and fight back. That's why the enemy been smacking them in the face. But I need to let you know, when you start fighting back, the enemy ain't going to attack you as much. Why he ain't going to attack you as much? Because he going to know you ain't no push around. Come on now. There you go, sister. He going to know that you ain't no push around. And you ain't going to stand and fall for the same, the okie doke, like he's been falling for. Because guess what? When he come at you with, or your friend come at you with the okie doke, because see, the Bible said he gonna come to the one, he gonna send the one that's closest to you. Hey there, doctor. What's going on, Jim Sam? That one that said, man, I love you, I care for you, I'll die for you. That's the one that you gotta watch. Because guess what? Why he can't die for you? Because Jesus huh? already did it. <laughs> ain't that's nobody not. gonna sit there and say, man, I'll take the bullet. Now y'all know there ain't no truth in it. <laughs> Come on now, but I'll die for you. Come on now. Yo, Joe, you get in the city where you be like, Lord, I. I. You already know. I ain't but. No. I can't do it. Lord, spam. But I'm about to go. And y'all know how it goes. But that's what people tell us all the time. I got your back. I, I love you. I care for you. Then when you look around, that same one that say that I love you and care for you, be the same snake in the grass. Come on now, y'all. Come on. But you got to learn how to cut them off. See, they got some people in our lives right now. We know they ain't no good for us, but we still want to deal with them. So if they ain't no good for you, you better cut them off or you cut you off. Come on. Oh, yeah. But guess what? Sister, he loves us so much. And what'd he do? What'd he do? He'll let you know that that person ain't good for you. But, 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 but what do we say? What, what, what we say sometimes? Hey, my friend, I grow up with that one. Yeah. That, 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 that's my killer dog, you know. Y'all know what I'm talking about. God is so good, y'all. We come to praise his name, y'all. Oh, we come to lift him up. Look at this. See, God start bringing blessings all over. We ain't asked for it, but God know what we know what they need over here. Huh? See, God start touching everybody's hearts. Huh? See, you got to understand, when you start opening up your heart, God will start opening up other people's heart. Huh? You got to understand what's going on. Huh? We got a God that say, I will provide. Huh? I will make ways out of nowhere. Huh? We got a God that loves us in spite of our wrong there. Come on now. Look what's going on. Look at look, look, look how the Holy Ghost move, y'all. Look at look at how the Holy Ghost. See, you got some blessings on the way. My God. Y'all better understand y'all in the right place at the right time. Hallelujah. See how God works? See, if you stand for God, God say I stand for you. Yes, sir. You gotta understand. We just stood for everything else, but ain't nothing stand for us, huh? Because when we got in the situation, everybody that said it will help us turn it back on us. But when you went to Jesus, he was there without stretch down, say, open up your mouth, child, and tell me what you want. I already know what you're in need of, but I want your lip to black right now. Bless y'all, bro. We good. We good. God said, just open up your mouth and I'll speak to you. See, God already knows. See, God knows she needs them five hundred dollars already. See, God already read her heart when, when she woke up and she had a bill. Huh? A bill came through and, and she didn't know what she was gonna do. Huh? But God got involved huh? because why the kindness and love draw her to God. See, the other woman was acting evil and wicked. You know what I'm they don't understand how you get God's attention when you treat people right. When you love people that don't love you. 
The Bible says you got to love your enemies. Huh? Come on now, you know some of us got some enemies that I don't want to have nothing to do with. I don't care if that rap can get rolled over by a car. I don't want to have nothing to do with it. But what he said, love those who spitefully use you. Come on now. So with, 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 with God, it, boy, it, it, it's some hard things that God asks us to do. But we realize when we do them, we get blessed from God and not from the world. Come on now. Because the world don't bless you, they curse you. Because what they charge you for the little stuff they give you, you'll say, man, I'm a waste of my time. But just the little thing you do for God, God will give you a big blessing. Come on now, y'all. Why God give us a big blessing? Because what he do? He allow us to come out here Sunday after Sunday to give our love and our joy and our peace. Go in our pockets to come see about you. Come on now. See, that's how God works. See, when you have a heart and a desire for God, God will start opening up some stuff. I feel it. You feel it, sister. Yeah. God will start opening up some stuff for you. Look at you. Just like you say, you've been crying for a long time, trying to do it your way, get the kid back. But God said, you stand down and let me stand up. My God. Let me get involved in this one. Oh, I ain't worrying about them lawyers because no, I'm a lawyer that never lost a case. Because see, when I get in the ball game, you got to understand, everything that ain't gone, they got to go. And what happened? The results don't come. Why? Because you had a love for your children. Some women right now throwing their, ch their children in the microwave. In the oven, whatever. Come on now, y'all. But you love your kid. I say, if you don't want the kid, that's right. But not only that, put them up for adoption. Don't go to board the kid because that's a human being. Put them up for adoption. Find a family that you know that's going to take care of your kid. Don't, 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 don't do anything to it. Don't let no doctor, the, the doctor hate get in your body and mess your body up because now you you feel like you don't want the kid but you got doctor hating them messing up your whole body and when you want a baby you can't have none come on y'all y'all gotta understand your body is a temple of the living god your body so what do we have to use our body like a temple but we use our body for everything but for God. But when you use your body for God, you just don't know what God will put in your body. Why? Because God put some healing and some deliverance. Somebody supposed to be sick right now. Somebody supposed to be on their dying bed right now. But God looked beyond your faults and saw your needs one more time. Because why? He said, I see your faults. I, I see what you're going through. Can you allow me to come into your life? You got a lot of people running around right now, got plenty of money, but missing. Come on now, sister. Because guess what? You know one thing about this? You know one thing about happiness you can't buy? You know one thing about joy you can't buy? One thing about peace you can't buy? You got to earn all that debt. Uh-huh. See, some folks try to buy it with their money. And even in the Bible, it says that somebody wanted to buy the nurture from the man of God. But the man of God said, this ain't for me to give. You got to get that from God. See, only God can do that type of stuff. Oh, that's too big for me. So I had to do what I had to do in order for me to give it. Everybody don't have it. Everybody don't have a little joy. Everybody don't have some peace. You got to understand when you got them down, keep it and hold on to it. Because somebody's trying to mess with your peace. They're trying to mess with your joy, your happiness. They want to mess with that because why? They're mad because you're happy. 
They got somebody right now. I got a revival when coming up in Mad because you got the $500. Yeah. 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 But God was trying to show her. Yeah, that money gone. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, she holding on to that round here. Let me hold all of my blessing, y'all. Let me hold all of that blessing, y'all. Y'all. Have God been good to us, y'all. All right, all right. Yeah. 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 God bless you, my brother. Yeah. 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 Open up your mouth. All right. So, man, this testimony. How do I even start? I, I know. If I don't know if y'all see me walk around all the time. I'm always trying to help people out and stuff. And uh, recently. I think about two months ago I was saved and uh, it, it was the most amazing thing. And it, it, I, when I tell you, I'm, I'm very dramatic, I'm very imaginational. So I look at the kids because I'm like, y'all are gonna hear, y'all are gonna hear a story. And because it, it literally felt like the angels came down and like they saved my life. When I tell you this, man, uh, like I go through. Okay, so for me, I'm an addict, and I I go through these these little touchstones every day. And I'm gonna start by reading one of them for today. Because uh, these are what guide me and help me remember, like, every day I'm an addict, but, like, I, I still suffer from, like, uh, that temptation of, like, wanting to smoke and, oh, I'm so bored, I want to go and smoke, oh, I'm so, like, sad, I want to, maybe I should go smoke, like, and, and do things. Uh, and today's the 18th, and it's basically an affirmation for yourself, and it says, love can be yeah. its own reward, or no, or label. The feeling of attachment, of being related, of caring about someone is what life is all about. Before recovery, we may have feared we could not love anyone. When we feel love, we may also feel cheated because our affections aren't returned as we want them to be. Or we may think relationships are just too complicated and painful. It's true that relationships are difficult at times. The only thing more difficult is having none. In this quiet moment, let's reflect on our relationships. Close attachments to both men and women are essential to our progress. Without them, we would not want to be in recovery. We don't need to say to our friends, what have you done for me? We can feel an inner fullness and satisfaction knowing we have relationships we truly care about and we are accepted as we are. That alone is a remarkable award. I appreciate the joys of my relationship with you. Man, I, I don't know what, what got me into drugs, but it was I used to be a dental assistant. I was, for seven years I was a dental assistant and COVID hit. And uh, the dental field got scary. Yeah, it got it got scary in the dental field. So I decided to take an office job. I lost that job and ended up. My rent was paid, thank God, for like two months. But then I was bored. So my neighbors ended up were, were drug dealers. I started just doing drug dealing and started smoking. I was smoking meth. And walking around when you're in, when you're on meth, you feel like you are just lost. And you don't know it sometimes because you're so hyped up on this drug that like you just lost. I walk around for days on sometimes just trying to figure out what to do, where to go, my next movement. But every time I always met people that were going through the same thing, and you experience this this thing that happens to you that people are going through the same thing and it's love. Like we all are just trying to find some kind of love, and God really just will show you these things. I pray all the time now, like whenever I'm walking and I see those people still, because I'm, I'm still one of those people, but I'm, I'm, I'm approaching it differently because I got God to guide me everywhere I go. Through everywhere I go, y'all. And when I tell y'all, like I, I walk past these people and I just, I'm like, okay, I'll just keep it short and simple. And I'm like, God, like, please make sure that they're okay. Please make sure they got a jacket. And then there's some days also where I'm sitting outside here, I'm like trying to pay my room and I don't have nothing. And then all of a sudden, a lady comes up with a bo box full of burgers and says, here you go, like, here's some food. Things like that happen to me all the time, I swear, man, all the time. And so I take the box of burgers, I'm walking around offering people food, you know, because I'm like, damn, now I got like 20 burgers and I don't have, I'm not going to eat like 20 burgers. So I guess where I'm going is whenever you feel like the, you're sad, God, the other day, so when I say I'm in recovery, it's been... I'm on my second day, <laughs> but I'm always trying to like fight. It's a fight. It is a fight. It is. It really is. But 
God got me. And see, like, I walk, walk, walk by and, and enjoy, about to enjoy food and get to tell my story. Because it is a story. You, we all have our stories, and I know you've all experienced this, this moment, those moments of like, oh, when you're down and out, and you don't know how you're going to pay for this, or don't know how to pay for that. The other day, I took somebody to go pay something by God, wow. because he was in the same battle that I was, and he just didn't believe in God. And I was like, bro, you just got to go. You just got to go with me. Come with me. Come with me. Finally, we, we ended up going, and they did a bill pay for him at the church to pay his electricity bill, which he was out in the streets trying to find money, trying to hustle, trying to like sell drugs and get 500 bucks to pay his light bill for his mom. God granted that for him. You gotta work that out for him. And then 500 bucks, I'm sitting there like, man, I wish I had that 500 bucks. I should, if I would have stepped before him into church, I would have had that 500 bucks. But then I, I thought about that, and I was like, I know, you know what I won? I won a $50 gift card to AMC, <laughs> which is funny, because two days ago, or yesterday, I got my phone stolen and my gift card stolen. <laughs> but you know what, it didn't bother me. That that, that didn't bother me the night before, the person that I used to be would have been pissed off. I would have been pissed off, I would have got out, got to a whole bunch of drugs, would have ignored all my calls, I would have just been, excuse me, but I would have been screwed off. Like, I was going to cuss. Sorry, guys. Yeah, don't be cussing now. <laughs> so I did that. And now I think about it and I'm like, man, I, I really, I'm just learning how to forgive people and, and, and love more. And it's just the most beautiful thing. I walk around now with just like, who can I help? Everywhere I go, I, 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 there's a challenge. If I got it and I can spare it, before I used to, I didn't know how to approach it because I was like, if I got it, let me just use everything that I have, but I gotta take care of myself. But but God has granted me, man. He's just been been is a is a, a miracle. I've just been seeing miracles in my life right now. Like, uh, I guess that is my testimony. It goes deeper than that, but I'm still on it. I'm still testimony. My testimony every day. <laughs> but from where I am now and where I'm gonna be in, in life, just because I trust God. <laughs> You're joking. I love your jacket. I found a jacket like that one time when I was walking and I was freezing outside. And I was like, I need a jacket, my friend. <laughs> I found a jacket and it looked just like that. It's the best jacket. Keep that jacket. But then when you get another one, make sure you hand that jacket to someone who needs it. <laughs> but that's awesome, you know. I, I just thank you, just thank you, gentlemen, for letting me like tell everybody that like, just to know how good God is. And, Y'all keep it going, y'all. Y'all yeah, keep all your testimony going every day. Thank you. Hey! Don't let me pull out to Mariah right now. No, I got the microphone. <laughs> what is it? What's up, man? <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this food that we're about to serve, Father God. We thank you that it's already blessed, so we say thank you, Father God. Uh, because of your goodness, your grace, and your mercy, Father God. Thank you for all those that had to do, that played a part in making this day possible. That includes each and every one of us that's here. There's no big eyes and little you. There's no one left out. And in your kingdom, Lord God, there's no unemployment. So everybody is special, and everybody is needed, and everybody has great, great, great qualities embedded in them. In Jesus' name, thank you. Hello, 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 my brothers and sisters. How y'all doing? Wow. I don't know how many that are here today that have ever heard me speak, but every time I do speak, I always want to speak life into you. I always want to build, edify, and encourage. There's lots of things that establishes how we feel. And sometimes it gets established days before. And we're fitting something today that got established a week ago. Even something that we may have forgotten about, uh, not even thinking about at the time, but in any given moment, it can raise up the head up Oh, it can run its beautiful head up. But it's because something or somebody invested in your mind, invested in your conscious. Took time out to say it's important 
that I not only get your attention, but I control it. But I control it. It's hard to believe that just turning on my television, no matter what channel I go to, that station saying I want to control you. Uh, what station I put it on the radio, YouTube, internet, that media says I want to control you. Says I want to control you. And the most powerful thing that God gave to humanity, the most powerful thing that God gave all of us, the most powerful thing is a will. Somebody help me out for a second. Somebody say, my will. My will. God gave you something that not even he'll control. He gave you something that he will never attempt to control. So why did he give us something called my will? Or a will? Because God wanted you to have the same thing that he had when he created you. So that said that he not trying to establish a race of robots. But there is a problem. There's a dangerous problem. And there's also a precious uh, a, 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 a situation, or issue at the same time. Because the same will that he gave us, we can use that same will against him. We can choose to go somewhere else. But that same will that he gifted us, the will that came from here, because he said, I want you to have the same ability, that's your own will that I have when I create you. So what was, the, what was God's intentions then? God's intention was that he wanted man to use his will, his own will. Somebody say my will again. He wants you to use your will to follow his will. That's why he gave us a will. I mean, it's, it's something that we hear all the time about a will, but anybody ever think about where a will sit? There's a seat for our will. Oh man, this probably goes over a few people's head, but this, all of this has everything to do with kingdom. A will sit or have a seat. I put it this way. You came over here today by who chose? That was your will. Okay? That's a lie to every one of us to make a choice but the problem that we have with that choice ability called a will is we can use that same gift against god so now did god give us a will to rebel against him certainly not but he gave us a will so we can choose to follow his will that's it it's a choice that's the greatest gift you have. So we can choose to follow other doctrines, religions, beliefs. We can even choose to follow wrong emotions. We can use to follow wrong attractions. We can be attracted to the wrong thing. So. I just want to just let you guys know that Jesus loves you. And Jesus said this right here. He said, my will. The same thing that y'all just said, my will. He said, my will is to do the will of the Father. My will is to do, do the will of my Father. That's why he gave us a will. That's why he gave us a will. The problem that we have, and a lot of times it comes out of uh, misinformed information or ignorance or uh, 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 a lack of attraction to knowledge and understanding about who God is and searching out who he is. One of the problems that we have is that all around us we see repetition. 
something repeatedly done, something repeatedly said. And that's the problem right there. That's the problem because our will sit in one seat. It sit down like my brother just sit down to start eating. Our will sit in a seat and our beings and it don't sit in our flesh. Our will do not sit in our spirit. But our will sit in the heart of our seat, in the seat of our subconscious, and our subconscious. But we got more than one conscious. We have a conscious, and we have a subconscious. And the will sits in the subconscious. That's why the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That thinking in his heart, the word heart there is the word for subconscious. Every one of us have a subconscious, and every one of us have a conscious. And the problem that we have is that our conscious remembers everything right now. And our conscious not only have the thoughts and the memories of what's happening all around it right now, but the problem is that we may find that our subconscious don't have the memories of everything that's happening right now. But our subconscious is far more important than our conscious. Because our subconscious is, is, is where everything that our conscious fed into it is downloaded. So when you completely, when you compete repeatedly hearing something over and over and over and over and it gets in your subconscious, then that's what you become. That's why the media is saying things over and over, saying things over and over until it wins your subconscious over. And once it gets in your subconscious, that's when the Bible said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So is he. And so it's important to be careful and watchful and pay attention what you feed your conscience because your, our conscience is always moving and always alive. But everything in your conscience don't go to your subconscious because your, our conscience has the ability to forget. And as long as it stays in our conscience, we still safe. It don't get in our subconscious. As long as it stays in our conscience. So that's something that's forgotten. But 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 the devil, the de the, the devil strive to get it downloaded not in your conscious but in your subconscious. Because in your subconscious, you don't have to walk around remembering anything right now. But it's gonna be what you respond from. It's gonna be what you live from. Because that's in your heart. That's how you're gonna live. I've talked before about ideals. That's another powerful thing. We have in this world terrorism. And we want to go and destroy guys like Bin Laden, Saddam Hussein. But what we do, when we do that, we only enhance the growth of terrorism. Because terrorism is not an action. Terrorism is an idea. It's an idea. And the Bible teaches us the more affliction that that idea receives, the more it'll grow. Are y'all hearing me? So in order to destroy or to remove a bad idea, the only way to move it is to come up with a better idea. Because a better idea carries the same principle. They can, they can destroy you, but their better idea will continue to live and grow. So the idea that Jesus brought to us, he said, there is a kingdom. There is the kingdom of heaven now here. Because all the world's kingdoms have all been contaminated. It is all confusing. It is all deadly. There is no true love in the kingdom of this world. But it's so beautiful to know about the beautiful kingdom that Jesus came to tell us. That's why he says, seek ye first 
the kingdom of heaven. And all these things will be added to what you're looking for. It'll be added to you. So let's take a thought for a second and ask ourselves a question. What is it that I want from things? The things we go after. The things that we fight for. What is it that we want from the things that we dream of? The dream, the things that we'll even die for. What is the one thing that all of us have in common that we want from the things that we, even if it's going out to hurt somebody? What do you want from that? What do you want from gossiping and lying on somebody? What is it that you want? The question is, what, is, what are you searching for? Well, let me... Let me tell you what you're searching for. Everyone is searching for satisfaction. It's searching for satisfaction. So we come to bring someone that has no bad side effects because the blessings of the Lord make him rich and he adds no sorrow. We're talking about Jesus Christ and his kingdom. We're talking about a place it's not just a place, but it's also a person. It's God. The character of God. The nature of God. The lifestyle of God. The mind of God. The personality of God. The purpose of God. The intent of God. The nature of God. So we want to just encourage you guys today as you get your plates. We want to say thank you for coming out today. We are brothers keepers, keep it real. We keep it real and we just shoot from the hips. I would like to say my say for myself. Thank you, my brothers, for being faithful. We are brothers keepers. And there are those that have come out to support these brothers. Many have came, but they didn't hang. Many have Stop by. But they couldn't hang. Many have visited. And they wind up quitting. Many tried. And many died. Their ideas died. Their desires died. And the Bible said, grow now weary and well doing. So I thank God for these brothers that have stand. They have women that come out to support what God is doing out here. Nobody out here claim to be a perfect example of heaven, but all of us come out here to claim that we're pointing you to a person whose name is King Jesus. King of kings, the anointed king. The anointed king. King Jesus. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife likes that couple come back. Oh man. But anyway. <laughs> uh, uh -huh, okay, then we'll, 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 we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll talk about it. Well, that man is a professional fish uh, uh, a cleaner. I can't wait to taste taste one that gets done. Anybody work with look at look at look at the care that he used. Man, look at him gentle. He know what to do. He's not even messing up the parking lot with it. Thoughtful and considerate. I like to thank all these young folks for coming out today because you're special and wonderfully made. You young men and young ladies are awesome. You guys have greatness in you. And the reason why you always hear me talk about how great you are, because God created you great. It don't, it, don't, it don't matter what things or what roads or, or wrong roads you chose to go down in life. It still don't change the greatness that God put in you. So we want to thank all the ladies and young ladies, the moms, the grandparents, the dads, the grandpas, the sisters, the uncles, the aunties, the brothers, the cousins, the homeboys, the homegirls. We want to thank all the businesses in this community. Oh, my God, because without the businesses, there'll be a lot of things that will go lacking in many houses. 
because there would be nowhere to purchase the, the, the supplies and the material that you bring to the community. We want to thank each and every bit of you, especially in your own rights. And we thank God for you. We thank God for just gracing us with his presence today. I'm just honored to be in the presence of such wonderful, fine people today. Brother got an awesome testimony that he shared freely with everyone. And I'm sure there's many more awesome testimonies out here. And I thank God for boldness to stand before people and share the secrets, because it was secret, because it wasn't done public. Many things that is not done publicly uh, is not desired for it to go publicly at that moment, depending on the individual. But when a person go public with some things in their, in their past, it's not to ever be taken lightly or for granted uh, to run over that, because that's a special place to be. It says that you're in a place of wanting to be used because you open your mouth. God bless you, young man. You didn't just shut it up in you. I thank God for all these awesome brothers around here. God is blessing us. And I so I speak blessings over our families, our loved ones, those that are close, near, and far. We thank God for the families. And we just speak blessings over the families right now. We speak peace. Peace, peace, peace in the families first. Peace in the families. And Lord God, every individual heart and mind, Father God, we speak peace. Not just anybody peace, not the peace that the world offers, but the peace that only you give, Father God. And we want to say thank you, Father God, because your peace is not like the peace that the world has to give. And Lord God, we want to say thank you. Thank you for a song, a melody. We thank you for such unity in your spirit, Father God, that is able to reach the highest mountain. And your love, your blood flows even to the lowest valley. And Father God, we thank you for every doors that open up in the name of Jesus. That your word will not fall on deaf ears always. But Father God, we want to say thank you for all our brothers and sisters that stand for you and will stand out and make it known and not hide your gift in a closet and won't shut it behind closed doors. We want to say thank you, Father God, because you've called the weak, you've called the, the hurting, you've called the tall, and you've called the short, you've called the dark, and you've called the light, you've called the rich, and you've called the poor. And we want to say thank you, Lord God, because you are no, of no um, respect a person. And we want to say thank you, Father God. Oh God, you look at each one of us through those glaring, beautiful, shiny eyes that says, I love you. We want to say thank you because, Lord God, it's not your will that any man should perish but that everyone will be received into the kingdom of heaven. If you only say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you came and that you died and you died for all of our sins. And we're so glad that you took the time out with somebody low and broken and, 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 and less and, 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 and tore up from the floor up just like me. I'm so glad you didn't look over me that you had me on your mind huh, when they lift you high and stretch you wide. We're talking about King Jesus. Huh. Jesus, he is the way, the truth, and the light. That's the reason us brothers coming out here each and every Sunday. Oh God, we try to be here faithfully, but we don't come to bring a sword. Huh. We don't come to cause confusion. Huh. We don't come to fuss and fight. Huh. But we bring the love of God with us today. And we want to say, God love you, and so do we. We are all as unbaked bread. We are all as a wretch that's undone. Nobody has arrived yet. But it's so good to know the king, to know one that never made a mistake, to know one that, 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 that never disobeyed the creator, but he was obedient even unto death. 
And so we're here because Jesus is real. We're here today because Jesus is alive. We're still here because Jesus is alive, and not only just alive, but he's alive in our heart. And we're here because he reigned. He reigned, he reigned. He reigns from heaven to earth. He's our king. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And we want to say thank you, Jesus. He loves you more than you can imagine. He loves you more than we can even begin to love ourselves. You think you might love your children. Sir. You think you might love your mama. You think you might love your daddy. And you might do. I'm pretty sure you do. I'm sure you love. Oh my God, your parents. But I tell you about a love that you can't begin to compare yours to. We're talking about a love that not only would die for you, but he'll lay down his life. That's a little bit more than just dying. Every now and then we'll read with someone, uh, oh my God, went after a loved one and they died in the process. Uh, but when a person uh, know they're taking a step uh, and another step, uh, and know this step uh, is leading to suffering, this step is leading to agony, this step is leading to disrespect, uh, this step is leading to death, uh, this step is leading to the grave. Uh, he went to the grave. Oh, my Lord Jesus, and he took your name with him. He went to the grave, and he took the dope man with him. He went to the grave, and he took the prostitute with him. He went to the grave, and he put, took that closest man to hell with him. But he went to the grave oh, to pay a price that none of us could pray, pay. He paid a debt that we owed. We thank God because he's faithful. And when he says, I love you, he didn't just shout it from the rooftop, but he lived it like he talked it. Oh, he walked it like he talked it. He said he would. He come, he come here that he may draw, draw us to the Father. He's a bridging gap uh, a maker. That's what he does. He bridges the gap because every now and then, and I'm sure some of us have been in that situation, seen a loved one that's in trouble, and you reach out to help them, but you find that your arms weren't long enough. <laughs> Sometimes we had to travel a distance, but we find out we just can't get them because there's something that Lord God that hindered us from reaching them. But Jesus is that gap <laughs> because everybody wants to reach heaven, <laughs> but can't nobody get there because you're not strong enough, because you're not holy enough, because you're not pure enough, because you're not righteous. So Jesus said, I'm going to lay down my righteousness for your name's sake. I'm going to put my strength on display because I'm going to show you that if I lay down my life, that I can raise it up again. Name one person that ever conquered death. Name one person that ever walked on water. Oh, I'm telling this man named Jesus is bad. He's better than Clark Kent turning him into Superman. He's better than the Hulk. He's better than the Avengers. He's better than wind. He's better than fire. Oh, he's better. He's better. He's tougher. He's, oh my God. He don't just sit in eternity, but eternity sits in him. He don't just have power, but he is power. He just don't have life, but he is life. And any time when you are something, that don't mean that you're going to ever have your well running dry because you are the source of the need for everything that's living around you and that you can draw from his strength. So we want to say thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world. In his hand, he's got the whole world. In his hand, he's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world. In his hand, he's got the whole wide world. In his hand, he's got the whole world. In his hand, he's got the whole world in his hand. He's got you and me. In his hand, he's got the babies, the little ones. In his hand, he's got mother, 
and Papa. The air is hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got your good, your bad. The air is hand. He got your future, your past. The air is hand. He's got your good, your bad. The air is hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He got your smiles, your frowns. The air is hand. He's got your tears, your laughter. The air is hand. He's got your ups, your downs. The air is hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got your days, your nights. The air is hand. He's got your good, your bad. The air is hand. He's got your happy, your sad. In his hand, he's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world. In his hand, he's got the whole wide world. In his hand, he's got the whole world. In his hand, he's got the whole world in his hand. He's got mother and father. In his hand, he's got sister and brother. In his head, he's got uncles and aunties. In his head, he's got the whole world in his head. He's got your highs, your lows. In his head, he's got the wealth, your brokenness. In his head, he's got the riches and poverty. In his head, he's got the whole world in his head. He's got your bills. And your dates. What else he got? Come on, tell. Oh, you got one. Come on, you gotta say two of them now. He got the uh, ground and the grass in his head. All right, come on, man. He got what you got. He got the heaven, the hell. And no, okay. What you got? He got the cold, the shoes in his head. Yeah. What else he got? He got the life and people in his head. He got the world and nations in his hand. He got the world and universes in his hand. He got the trees, the leaves in his hand. He got the fruit and vegetables. He got the fruit and vegetables in his hand. He got the whole world in his hand. See, he's got the days, the nights in his hand. He's got the hot, the cold. In his hand, he's got the hard, the soft. In his hand, he's got the cold, the hot. In his hand, he's got the soft, the hard. In his hand, he's got the good, the bad. In his hand, he's got the happy, the sad. In his hand, he got the new, the old. In his hand, he's got the whole world in his hand. See, so that means he got your help and your strength. It's in his hand. Give it to him. See, just don't give it to him when you're feeling bad. Give it to him when you're feeling good, too. Because it's all in his hands. And he's awesome.